Hi, this is Comp 1010 at the University of Manitoba. I'm Dr. Celine Latulip, and today I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about strings and how you do operations on strings. So we need to understand the structure of how strings are stored and made up. So a string is made up of a number of characters, and you can think of them as being lined up in a box that has a bunch of different slots in it. So each character then has an index to allow us to get into the right slot in the box to get it. So if we look at this diagram below, we have the string sprocket, which has eight characters in it, and it's got indices from zero to seven. So the first letter in sprocket S has an indice of zero, and the second letter P has an indice of one. And these slots all just hold a single character. They're two byte slots. So a string is made up of a bunch of these slots and strings can have many, many slots or just a few slots. It depends on how many are needed. So this indexing from zero is really common in computer science and it can take a little bit of getting used to. Um, this can lead to something that we call the off by one error that's really common. And we'll talk a little bit more about that at the end of this video. And, but the, the general idea for that is that although there's eight characters in the string below, they're indexed not from one to eight, but from zero to seven. All right, so when we compare strings, we can't use the equals equals sign that we use when we're comparing numbers. Right? And you also can't use relational operators like less than or greater than. You have to use specific operations that are defined for the string object. So let's look at this. If we created a string and we called it one and we put test inside of it, and then we have a string that's called two and we put a st in it, and then we say two equals te plus two, what's happening here is we're doing string concatenation um, and so two will have T E S T in it. So two should actually be very similar to one. They should both be T E S T. But if we actually do this, if we try to print out and do a comparison with equals equals and try to print out whether or not these two things are equals, this will give us false. Um, and the reason for this is that strings are objects. So this comparison is not actually looking at are the letters the same in these two strings? It's looking at these two string variables on the stack and saying are the memory addresses of the objects they're pointing to the same? And they are not. So equals equals gives true only for the exact same object. Um, the value what's inside the object is not compared at all. All right, so one and two refer to different objects here. Um, they just happen to contain the same characters. So with strings, we actually want to do something that goes into those character lists and compares them. So just to clarify all that, let's look at this diagram that shows these things in memory. So here's our stack and it has primitives on it. It also has references to objects. So here's int a and we've got 813 float x and it's got 9.42, a boolean b and it has the value false in it. And then we have string one. And because this is an object, the actual text is not in here. This is just a reference to somewhere in the heap. So this is going to be a memory address that points to here. And this is gonna be some memory on the heap. And here's the text that's in that string. Similar for string two. This is just a reference, it's a memory address for the object that this points to, which happens to be this object over here. So this is a different spot in memory. These two addresses are different. They point to different objects. Now it turns out that these two objects contain the same letters, T, E, S, T. But when we do an equal, equal comparison, that comparison is just looking at these memory addresses to see if they're the same. It's not looking inside the objects to compare the letters. All right, so if we do want to compare the letters, we need to do some operations on the string. Um, and so strings, because they're objects, have operations that are called methods. So other than the plus operator, which is for concatenation, all of these string operations are methods and they use the dot notation. So let's have a look at what this looks like. Here's string s and the text is my string of text. And then we're 
creating an int variable called num letters, and we're going to assign to that the result of this. So this is s dot length. So s is our string. It's this string right here. And we're calling this operation on this particular string. And the length operation will simply count the number of characters in here and return it. So when we execute this, s dot length is going to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So there's 17 characters in here. So s dot length will be 17. And so that will get assigned to num letters. So let's dissect this a little bit. S is what we call an instance of the object string. So instance is a word we use for one particular variable of an object. So if we have string s equals my string and string s1 equals your string, s and s1 are both instances of the string object. Length is a method that can be called on strings. Um, and there's many other methods that can be called on strings. So primitive types that we've seen already, int, float, char, boolean, they don't work like this. They don't have this dot notation. This is the dot notation is only for objects. So in this line, what we have is int num letters equals s dot length int num letters, this is the variable we're creating to capture the return value or the result of this method. S is our instance um, of string, and length is the actual name of the method that works on string instances. This particular method doesn't take any parameters, so we have empty brackets. All right, let's look at a couple of other operations that happen on strings. So another common operation is equals, and this is what actually will solve our problem where before we wanted to compare two strings and we were using equal equal signs that doesn't work. This is what we do instead. So string one dot equals string two. This will return true if the letters inside string one are exactly the same as the letters inside string two in exactly the same order. So if we look at this Boolean EQ here, this is a variable we create, a Boolean variable to capture the return value of this equals method. My string is the name of the string that we're calling this on. It's an instance of string. Dot equals is the method name. And your string here is a parameter that we're passing to it. So that's just the name of some, that's just uh, another string. Because of course, we need another string to compare it to. So, in this first case, if we have my string equals to dog, capital D-O-G, and your string equals to dog, small d-o-g, this will return false because they're not completely identical. This other version, equals ignore case, would return true in that case. If I had capital D dog and you had small d dog, this would return true because we're going to ignore the case. Um, length, we've already seen, that counts the number of characters and returns the number of characters in a string, so that returns an integer. And char at is another really important method on strings. And what char at does is it gives us a single character from within the string using an integer, which is the index. So thinking back to that diagram with the slots, we can get the character that's in a very specific slot by giving a number. So this will return a char. Um, and so let's have a look at what that might look like. Here we have char c equals my string dot char at three. So again, char c is the variable we create to capture the return value. My string is our instance variable and char at is the method we're calling. We're passing in three as the parameter. So in our original slide, um, we go back to it we have sprocket and char at three in this case would return o okay there's many other string um, methods that you can look at so if you google java string class you'll be able to see lots of things you can do with strings so the last thing we want to do is revisit this idea of the off by one string length error. 
So often we want to look at every character in a string and maybe do something with it. And that means that at some point we have to look at the last character in a string. And this can be tricky. So how do we do this? The first thing we need to do is find out the length of the string. And then we can use the char at string method to get to that last character. But we have to be careful. So imagine our string s is sprocket. And we do int len. And this is creating uh, an int variable called length or len. And we're calling on s the length method. So this will return 8. So len will be 8. So now we know there's 8 characters in our string. If we try to do this, which might be your first thought, we create a, a char and we call it last character. And then we're going to assign it to s.charat and pass in len len, which is 8. This is going to cause us a problem because we're basically trying to say, let's go to slot 8 and get the character out. And if you look down here, we try to go to slot 8. while well, there is no slot 8. There's, there's just no spot in memory for that. Um, and this is because we're indexing from 0. So the last character is always the length minus 1. And if we do this, then we're going to do char at 7, and then we'll return the t from sprocket. And so this is the correct way. This solves the off by one error. Um, and you just this is just something that you have to get used to in computer science is this indexing from zero. So our length is always going to be one greater than our highest indice to get into the string. All right, so that's everything for thinking about how you do operations on strings as objects and making sure that you understand how the characters in a string are indexed. Thanks for watching.